So let's move on to the public hearing for 86 Main Street. Um, let's see if we have a hearing notice for that. Dun, dun, dun. Details. Virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 14th, 2021. At 7 p.m. on the petition of Fitz Eagle, 86 Main Street, LLC slash Thomas Fitzpatrick for a special permit to run a landscaping, tree business and storage of trucks and equipment along with wood and wood associated with the wood on the property located at 86 Main Street, North Reading, MA, Map 24, Parcel 2. And do we have a Mr. Thomas Fitzpatrick here? Yes, good evening. How are you? I'm Thomas Fitzpatrick. Hi, Thomas. We are, I am doing well. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're in planning or hoping to do in this location? So, as you guys know, I, I currently own and operate a tree company. I have um, several trucks, and I'm looking for basically a storage yard to park the equipment. Most of our work we go out onto people's properties for the site and we uh, make people's yards better, or remove the trees. At the end of the day, we bring our trucks back and we have the material within the trucks, which we need to dispose of. So it's clean material, it's only wood grindings and we'd like to store it at our property to therefore take it and reprocess it to send it out back out so it saves time. I mean, currently, right now, I usually pay my guys an extra hour to two an evening to transport it to different dump sites to dispose of it. And it would be a lot more economical if I could put it within when I have full complete loads, then I could make a load and then dispose of it. Um, I mean, I'm just looking to, you know, again, to operate my business in a safe place that I could potentially call mine also, mine and my wife's, and we, we have a safety factor to store our equipment. I appreciate that. Um, so, and Jerry, I'm gonna ask you to, to weigh in on this along with, of course, everyone, all the other members, but we're in a highway business district here and uh, let's see, we're, you're asking for a special permit. For, and a landscaping business can be allowed by a special permit, but I don't see anything within our bylaws that allows truck storage or um, you know, the sort of material storage I know there's been some historical uses like that along Main Street, um, but there's there's definitely been some um, some work in town to try to try to move away from just vehicle storage along Main Street. So, Jerry, could you help give some thoughts on this? I'm just not seeing how where that would be prohibited, permitted. That's not permitted. Truck storage and storage of vehicles is not permitted. Um, we currently, I don't want to say the address, but we currently have one in Superior Court uh, relative to that on Main Street. And I would just uh, like to leave it at that at this point in time um, because they had, they had storage there and we're not allowed to have that type of storage um, once again on Main Street. And so as I, as I understand it, just from reading the bylaws and what's permitted, a landscaping business could, could be there. Um, I mean, it's really the whole point of Route 28 and right. the, the Highway Business District is supposed to be retail, um, and retail focused. And if you were um, kind of falling within, you know, somewhere where someone's coming to buy landscaping, I mean, products that would be different or even just having your office 
your if you were having an office and having customers come in to hire you or engage you, that would be different. But the I um, guess it's it's I'm sorry to cut you off. Um it's more of like a, a general thing where yes, I, I need a full time office to have my sister who's helping me uh there for the paperwork, the bills, the invoicing. Currently I live in Redden. I would I am looking actively to move into North Redden myself for a personal place. I'm using my house in Redden as my uh, mailing address. We also would like to do retail for firewood. So it's, I guess you could say, maybe I misworded fully on the truck storage part where I would be keeping the equipment there, but also potentially creating firewood for resale, wood chip for resale. And with being on Main Street, it would be a great place for people to have the publicity for firewood or wood chips or mulch to say, to be for people to buy from our company. You know, where if I was in the back of the woods somewhere, no one would know that I sold firewood or wood chips to say. So, you know, the equipment that we use, it's not necessarily just storage, it's, it's using it to, produce a material for retail and if that kind of helps interpret it i think we still have i mean there's still an issue with having all the vehicles there that's i mean that's not kind of what that area is really intended for um Vin and Bob can. So if we're talking about just storage of vehicles, I think Jerry would note the same as I just run through the businesses that run along 28 specifically. I can't think of anyone. The ironically, the closest vehicle storage location is um, the other matter on the agenda tonight, which is the, the, the rental of the uh, for rental business purposes. Which, um, which is a totally different um, approach. Moreover, if the idea here is that the materials are gonna be used to produce the products that are gonna be sold in theory, now it's a manufacturing interest, which I don't think is gonna be permitted under the bylaws either. So you've got, a lot, you've got a lot of mixed use here that I don't think is permitted by the bylaws. And the specific purpose of the property uh, Okay. Bobby froze. Uh, you froze there. As he has been represented. Bobby froze there for a minute. Okay. Sorry. So again, if if the materials are going to be used from for producing product, now we're talking manufacturing. And I, you know, that's now we're now it's becoming even more of a a mixed use purpose than just um, com uh, retail commercial, if you will. I mean, I'm, I'm open for suggestions on how you guys would prefer to go about anything. I mean, it's, I really like the town of North Redden and I think you guys have um, a great community, a great area for you know, my wife and myself to grow our business and our family. And I would love to be a part of your community. And I, you know, I, we've looked at a lot of other places and it's just, it's hard to find, you know, within any town, you know, like areas to, you know, what, I mean, this is our first one we're trying to go up for. So if you have recommendations on what would help suit, you know, and make everyone satisfied, you know, I, I'm not sure. So in terms of areas where, and Jerry, you can help me on this, where you could actually store vehicles in town. Are you allowed to do that out in Concord? Or is that, that's another one that's kind of, that's actually, those are all retail. They're selling equipment. That's questionable too. Um, which, you know, if- That's an industrial area. Um, Concord Street's industrial. Um, uh, there, I, I don't have all the the, the uh, 
a zoning bylaws uh, in front of me uh, at my ready, unfortunately. Okay, um, so, uh, so uh, there's, Kathy, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, Kathy, do you have that there right in the office, the industrial IO, IO business area so we can help these people out? Because we, we definitely in, want businesses to be able to grow. We love people who want to come to North Reading. Um, you're saying Main Street isn't where, that section of Main Street isn't where we would be able to allow you to have your, your vehicles stored. Um, if it were more of a uh, traditional retail, that's, that's allowed. You can be there to do that. So let me ask this, how would how does like the landscaping company fall in if they're parking their trucks and trailers there for their storage to go out? You know, what's the you know within the same idea of it, what's the difference with them putting trucks and trailers and lawnmowers there versus us with trucks and uh, hedge trimmers and chainsaws, you know, a similar idea. So if it's, you know, like um, Reading Lumber down the street, they do have, um, they do have their trucks for delivery out back, but it's, um, you know, the front of it's all customer parking and it's a retail store with the, you, know, you can pick up your, pick up lumber in the back or have, uh, they have some delivery trucks in the, um, in the back. So that's, that's one example of someone right down the street from that location with a retail business. From what I understand, speaking with CPC, um, Reading Lumber basically uh, is grandfathered in for a lot of <laughs> that they that they do have there. Um, and the zoning bylaws changed. Uh, since the zoning bylaws have changed, um, this does not become a property use. Okay, but what I'm storage what and I was manufacturing. Asking, what I was asking is, you know, the difference. Like, so landscaping is allowed to go for a special permit to occupy it. So, for a landscaping company, they would essentially need. What would they be permitted there, though, that would allow them that would be different than a company such as mine for, you know, they would have to store their trucks there to go in and out. That's, that's it doesn't mean they would get it. It doesn't mean they would automatically get it. That's why you, you, you'd be here, you're here before the zoning board of appeals. First yeah. off, secondly, you have very large equipment. You have cranes. Um, you have really large uh, trailers. Um, so a small landscape, scaping company is just that they're a small landscaping company. You're totally different. Okay. That you're on a right. much larger scale. That's what I was asking because originally when we were going through the process, um, we understood that, you know, when my sister was speaking that we fell in within the landscaping, uh, section of this so that's part of the reason why we progress with everything or else you know we we wouldn't have even tried to waste to try to do anything of this nature you know we just basically well i sent you to the zoning board of appeals because i denied it i sent you to the zoning board of appeals because i denied the fact that you could have that type of business there um we that's we the reason why i sent there. you there anything was denied i'm sorry jerry we were never aware of anything that we were just aware that we had to go for permits and we fell under a landscape and i this is the first we've ever heard of anything have you jen no that's the first i heard it was denied i thought we had to get a special permit in general for that property and that was the only reason why we uh, we followed this course and went with it and then um you know, when she was in there, you you were the gentleman that spoke up and said it was part, you know, we fall under the landscape. And that's the only reason why. Oh, it, it is it, no doubt. There's there's no doubt that falls. If you look under it, it looks under, it says horticultural and landscaping. It does say that without a doubt. But the zoning board of appeals right here are the ones that basically can, you know, tell you 
yes, you can have that, or no, you can't have that. And it's relative to a special permit. So yeah. the special permit process is what you're going through right now. Okay. If they tell you no because of the because of the size vehicles you have, or they no, tell no, you no because of it's a manufacturing, then then that's a total different. That, no, that's I, totally I different. That. What and, I mean uh, by what I mean by denied, what I mean by denied, I mean I don't mean to say denied. I mean by I I send you to the zoning board of appeals because it's relative to a special permit. I can't issue you a an approval. I can't issue you an approval um, relative to what you were looking for because that's not my authority. But mm -hmm. I would have to basically, uh, I guess the only word I can still say is deny and, and, and send you to the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Zoning Board of Appeals then gives you the option to, to move forward with that or not. Um, so that's where I stand with that at, the, at that point in time. I don't, I don't know if that was, um, if you understood that or not. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, you know, I, I didn't know that, you know, this is how it, it felt from the beginning. Like I said, or else we wouldn't have pursued this at all. And we wouldn't have applied for it, you know, if we knew up front that, you know, this was kind of. Yeah, I just thought it, we just needed a special permit in general. I didn't realize. Yeah, but well, a, a special permit, a special permit is never is never a, a guarantee, and that's why they have the zoning board of appeals. There's a lot of people that apply for special permits, and some get them and some don't. And it's, is there it's, anything different we can do, or no? Right, all oh, right. It's just you guys are 100 percent against everything. <laughs> Not. Um, there's definitely things that can be done on this on this property. Um, you know, we were, it's a smaller piece of property. It's right on Main Street, um, so that's going to have some. It will have a lot of impact on what can be done there. Um, but given that, I mean, you're right on the uh, right on the road there. Yeah. I mean, what what would have been the hope in the future was, you know, potentially how the fence comes along the road would be to try to put some type of building there to block off the back section. So it was nice and cleaned up, put some flowers, some plants, some nice, you know, I'm an arborist. I have a degree in arboriculture, try to decorate it with a nice design and layout and make it more appealing for the main road. I mean, the guy is asking an extensive amount of money and that's why it's been vacant for so long because no one's, willing to pay and he's very difficult as the cell is very difficult i should say to to deal with so when i finally was you know i i was willing to pay what he wanted yeah i was hoping like you said because it's on the road you could put a building up along the road which would block everything in the back essentially so you would come in the gate and then everything would be behind the building blocking it all and then that would potentially help clean up Main Street because, uh, again, for what the gentleman's asking, it's just, I know a lot of landscapers that talked to me about it and they just said, oh, the price is way out of line. But, I mean, if that's how you guys feel, I, I understand. I mean, I'm a firm believer things are meant to be. And if it's not meant to be, then, you know, it is a very expensive property. And I question, too, if I should spend that kind of money on it. So, so um i think all all very good points if if your i if your thought was that this was going to be a, a location where you can kind of offload the trucks from whatever the the cuttings were from that day and store the trucks on the front part of the property i don't think that's going to be something that this board would be comfortable with um if it were if you were coming in with a design to Put another building up there with um, you know plans and a proposal uh, obviously that's something we'd, we'd be excited to hear about and we'd want to look at um, but sort of as with what we have thus far uh, i i wouldn't be comfortable with, I mean, with what you're suggesting so okay so i mean my ultimate idea you know i mean everything involves money to say but this is um for 
I was hoping, like I had in my mind, if if everything worked out, is depending on what style building and what you guys approved of, was potentially putting up like a 60 foot wide by maybe 150 foot long building. On the back side of it, you have, I don't know, five, six bays, whatever it pertains to for the math calculations. And then you have a nice building up there, like you say, along the road, which blocks the back section out. But, you know, I would hope within the year I could, you know, afford to do all that. And I mean, I the banks, they were willing to do construction loans and stuff. I mean, if you guys think that it's a possi possibility, I have no problem doing all that work. But if you guys don't even think it, it, it's worth considering, then, you know, I'd rather just kind of turn and go the other direction. But if you, if you would like the idea of seeing, a, you know, a building <laughs> up 150 feet long by 60 feet wide, kind of along the main road where I come in behind it, I would like to knock down the other building that pre-exists. Mm -hmm. and do something like that then i mean i would pursue it but if if you don't like the idea you know to begin with and stuff you know we, we, it's going to be a lot of time and material and money spent to try to even approach something like that not to mention the seller <laughs> he knows every you know he's he he's trying to like try to tell me how to do things and obviously like i say i, I have to abide by the town and do what is the right steps you know so i mean he wanted a deadline to pass within you know by the end of the year which i already thought it sounded a little bit soon but i mean with all that aside is that something that i would just be kind of spinning the wheels and wasting time or would you like to see a building proposal with everything that would be blocked out and behind it with the uh, original building coming down. So just speaking for myself and, and not the, the board as a whole, I mean, absolutely would love to see you know, plans for redevelopment of this parcel, um, but it it really, it, we couldn't approve, pre-approve anything. Um, all I can is that, you know, what. It, but because you would have to comply with all the setback requirements of the zoning bylaws, you would have to come in front of of CPC and potentially this board, depending on what your proposed use was uh, with the plans. And we'd have to take a look at those, but you know, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's interesting. There's there, we're not saying you can't, you can't do anything here. We'd love to see this part of main street, get, get a, get an upgrade, get a, a facelift. So, um, but I, I understand it's uh, it's, it's time and money for you to kind of invest in, invest in the property, invest in plans, um, and then go through the process with the town to get something approved. If uh, on the other hand, if you're doing something that's, you know, completely meets all the setbacks and it meets the, the retail use as of right, you, um, you don't have to come see us again. You would just go to community planning commission for approval of the plans. We do know what the setbacks are off the main road there, roughly. Roughly, I believe those are 25 feet from the front, 20 from the side and the rear. Okay, you've, so got, you've got some, you know, I, don't, I don't know what this. Don't fit in. 25 feet off the road, no. Yeah. 20 feet I from mean, the front, 20 off each side and back. Um, Come in 25 feet. Yeah. And I mean, the type of business we're running, though, anyways, wouldn't, uh, even if we were to consider put up a building and garage pays to say in the back, that type of business doesn't appeal to you guys really anyways, it sounds like it. Well, it, it really depends on what you're doing and how you set up this site. I mean, if you were, you know, to, again, speaking from my, my perspective, do um, other people oh, mind chiming in also when she's completed, please? Absolutely. The, um, you know, how this property looks from the street is important. So um, 
storage of vehicles. Storage of vehicles isn't allowed as the building inspector told you already. So it would have to be, I don't even know what sort of, what vehicles could be there in connection what you, with the business. Sorry. Sorry, so you guys keep going back to storage of vehicles. What is the classification of storage of vehicles? Is it overnight parking or is it like just parking for a long term? Or like, how do you classify for storage of vehicles? Could you, um, could you define that a little bit better for me, please? That would be within these zoning districts. Once again, I don't have those in front of me, uh, the storage of vehicles, but you're the one that had mentioned at the beginning that um, you were planning on storing vehicles. Yeah, I, I just assumed overnight parking was something that potentially fell under the storage of vehicles. So I, this seems to be a big hang up on your part or everyone's part. So that's why I was trying to see if you guys could define that a little bit better, I guess, of what the definition was. And I mean, again, I'm, I apologize. This is my first time. I'm trying to do everything I can to, you know, build the business and do it the right way. And I, I just want, you know, I try to do everything I can to make yeah. sure everyone's happy. If you say parking of vehicles or storage, like that's what I guess he's trying to ask because he parks his vehicles there. But then they, they stay there, off. obviously, and then they leave during the day. So that's why he calls it storage. They're not dead. They're vehicles that run. They're registered. They're not just. They pay excise tax, you know, every every, every year, you know, road taxes, sales tax. Diesel so it's not tax. that he's just storing equipment to sell it or anything like that. They're vehicles that are used. So they're parked there. I so. mean, I could technically park them anywhere, at, you know, say, like she's saying, they aren't immobilized. So I could see you know, having, you know, any time that we have someone who has vehicles on site um, that are going to be parked overnight, we have a limit on how many vehicles and where on the site they can be. So if you're coming forward with a plan that has you know, a building in the front and then there is limited storage of a certain, well, limited overnight parking of a certain number of vehicles or equipment, behind that, the front. I mean, that could be something we could talk about, but as Jerry said, there's going to be uh, limitations on the, the nature of equipment that can be on site and that's coming in and out. It's just the, um, you know, considering where you are on Main Street, what's appropriate for that location. Okay, so, let me ask you this, uh, Jerry, you were the first one to uh, say that, you know, it was denied on the first go around to go to the special permit. So what is your outlook on this? It's not, it's not denied on a special permit. It's, it's denied relative to, I can't just issue you a permit to say, yes, you can go there. I have to mm -hmm. deny it and send you to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I don't have a choice. Okay. That's part of the, that's part of the bylaws. That's part of the laws. Um, so, so it's not just the, it's not okay. just a thing I'm telling you is denied. It's denied on my part because yeah. it's a special permit. And that's what gets you to the zoning board of appeals. That so is correct. You correct. Direct us there. Okay. So now, if we came with this proposal or this plan, you know, it's the same thing. It would say we'd go to you first, then you would bring it to the, then you'd say no. Now you have to do this step. And then we would go in front of them. Uh, oh, say I'm sorry, them, you guys as a group. And with that said, I mean, let me ask you. I mean, straight up, like, are we wasting everyone's time? Are we just kind of going? You know, like, is it? Do you guys strongly feel I should just look elsewhere, whether it's in town or another town? But I'm just saying, is this a property you guys prefer not to see? You know, developed there by a tree service. You need the Zoning Board of Appeals to, you need the, them to basically answer that question. Um, like I said, I, I've already sent you to the Zoning yeah. Board of Appeals to, to get their opinion. So they're on, on the uh, video now. So would you guys that are part of the Zoning Board of Appeals, please weigh in one at a time and let me know what 
your thoughts are because again, as everyone knows, you know, everything costs up money in this world. As you guys see, I yeah, I have nice equipment, but I work 24 hours a day. If I'm not physically turning wrenches or so, I'm thinking about it. You guys are I'm well known in town. There's no lie behind that. So I I want to do what's right, but I have a lot of things I have to weigh out all, also between I'm a hard working to make my money. Nothing comes easy, you know. My hands are destroyed from doing this. So are we wasting our time to try to put a tree company within this area, ideally? You know, would you guys mind weighing in on this factor, please? Each one separately from the Zoning Board of Appeals, please. I submitted tonight, I'd be I'd be hard pressed to approve it. I'm in the same category. And I could say that for this, this reason is that, miss that the plan that you've put forward is really, it, there's not a lot of detail. And I know what you've spoken of tonight and in, in your, your, uh, you know, what your plan is, and it's all sincere, I can tell by the way you phrase it. But at the same time, um, we have to, we have to consider it for, for more than just um, hopes to or is intending to do. In other words, no, I, I understand all that so, hopes and intended, but what, it, what I'm trying to say is, would you so guys for an area for an area of the town that is mostly strictly like retail, the idea of storing large vehicles and multiple vehicles, it's it's just out of the nature of mm -hmm. that zoning that area, and while the the Board of Appeals is here to allow variances. It's not here to grant something that is going to be a large scale change okay. in the in the use of that area. So, you to, to to tell you that, you know, if this happens and that happens and this happens, then you should be okay because it still no, may I, not I'm fit. Not, I'm not I'm not looking for you to say it's okay or something. I'm just saying in general with that piece of property, you guys within the board. Even if we try to meet all the criteria, it still kind of seems a company such as my nature would be best not to be on that specific property, is what I'm pretty much saying. Even if we tried to jump through hoops and get lawyers and engineers and do everything right, even if you come all down to that, at the end of the day, the general consensus is a different piece of property would ideally be better is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Like, you know what I mean? You don't want it set on Main Street at that property. Specifically with how there's a, with where you, it's not that you don't want it with how everything right. is phrased within the bylaws. It's, it, it's kind of best not to be within that, that property. Right. The, the, correct. The town fathers, whenever they set the zoning in place, for that location, yes. set the zoning the way that it is. It's up. It's up to us on appeal of that to and come I, to. And I respect that. And and to to look and evaluate, you know what what is if you were looking for a five foot, you know a a, a measurable, uh, you know say the building that you talk about, and you needed you know some relief. Um, that's something that we often consider um, to, to, to do an overall change to the property, the way that it's currently zoned, isn't something that I know in the year plus that I've been on the board, I've never seen. Okay, so yeah, it's not really favorable, you know? And I'm, please, I'm not trying to single any of you guys out and I'm not trying to, hold anyone accountable. I'm just looking for more of a general consensus for how everything is worded. I was never the best with reading, spelling, with English. I was always good with working with my hands. So I'm just looking for interpretation from the people that would know best how to understand the rules and regulations within. I think your time and energy and money would be better spent so in, a, in a different in a different location. It's just the okay. nature of where you're looking to go. If you 
if you drive along Main Street, if you go from basically the lobster place all the way down past Stop and Shop, Refect, just on 28 itself, you're yeah. not going yeah. to find a large scale business as the one that I'm really not sure how big your business is now, but I want to believe that it's going to become as big as, I don't know, any number of tree or removal uh, interests that grind and, and do that kind of work. That's yeah, great. Yeah. But if that company, can, if, I don't, if East or whatever came to us today and said, hey, we want to put one of our stores there because we're a large franchise that rips up trees all over New England, they'd be answering the same questions yeah. we're asking you. And I don't think they'd be able to find the way, no matter how deep their pockets were, because you're asking to change, you're asking to put a business, the nature of which is just not appropriate, if you will, okay. for that zoned area. If it was strictly industrial, Concord is an excellent example of that. All of those interests that go along Concord Road, they're not walk-in stores, so to speak. They're not classic right. retail. And even if they were to sell uh, bobcats, they're still not the idea of- yeah, The average person so walk in. I just don't know how you're going to, I don't, I think your time and energy and money is no, no, better spent in a, in a I, different- I respect different that. Place. And I, trust me, I much, appreciate it everyone you know this more up front than you know our you know our hopes of you know different things because we've had hopes for the last month or two two months you know we started talking to this guy back in may and he's saying oh it's grandfathered in it consists in that and i kind of had the same thought you did but the owner the seller is saying another thing and he's you know, so we had our hopes up to say, and like anyone, you have your hopes when you do anything. You buy a car, you go buy a new piece of sneakers, you, you have your hopes up. But, you know, just to know that, you know, that is not a suitable um, zoning to say within, to, to jump the hoops to try to work. It's, I appreciate that, you know, we're better off to try to find a different um, piece of part, a different parcel to say. And, um, you know, that's the biggest thing that that's, you know, I ref respectfully understand and just that's what the guidance I was looking to say. So as you go forward in your search, I mean, you're looking for almost commercial industrial as okay. opposed to um, retail mix. And it's maybe a sign of where we are, you know, most small towns or towns are, are going to be a little bit more, um, they're, they're less likely to just suddenly say, we're gonna change the entire focus of an area. So as you know, the pressure you're getting from the seller, I, I have a very clear understanding and respect for that, but I, I, I'd be hard for, I would, I'd be, I'm at, I just don't know if, I don't think you could get through the hoops that you'd need in order to put what you've described to us tonight um, on Main Street. Okay, it's just no, my I, sense of this. I, I, and really I don't want to see you get any, I don't want to see you spin your wheels in the least, let alone extend yourself for something that you probably mm -hmm. won't be able to achieve. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, now at the close of this, Will you guys give me a letter stating something that it was formally rejected because my PNS all pens on this and I have a heavy deposit that is non-refundable. If I, it's refundable pending, I don't get my permits to do operate my company and the guy would not put in the bank, anything. All he would put in there is permits because he said left and right. You're gonna um, get the so sure, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, maybe we should have some input from the abutter. I think Mr. Di Natale is is here for comment from public, which might sway the board for um, towards a approval denial. Just for the record, and absolutely. If we have people who came and want to speak before we close the public hearing, we'd like All to right. give them that opportunity. Um, 
Mr. Di Natale, if you'd like to um, voice any comments before we close the public hearing. Uh, I want to say thank you for the uh, opportunity to, to speak to you. Um, and the distribution of, of the uh, um, attachments were received. Yes, we did receive those. Thank you. Okay, so that says it all. Fair enough. Okay. I would I just note for the record that Mr. Di Natale uh, submitted a letter in opposition of of the uh, proposed use. Um, Madam Chairman, may it help? I'll just read the letter into the record and just create it. Absolutely. Uh, letter dated October 14th uh, to the attention of the North Reading Town, uh, Town of North Reading Attendant Zoning Board of Appeals. I am R.D. Natale speaking on behalf of 84 Main Street, which is adjacent to 86 Main Street. For the record, that's the application um, address. We received the notice of tonight's hearing regarding to the proposed wood processing landscaping business at 86 Main Street. Thank you for this opportunity to express our concerns, which we have highlighted in an attached PDF visual with an audio visual hyperlink. Given the direct proximity of 84 Main Street to the proposed use, several immediate issues arise relative to the site and overall situation prompt the following questions that we respectfully outline for your consideration. Is this used in line with the town, North Reading's vision for Main Street? Is site conducted for the use in this condition? How will this use affect others in this vicinity? Um, in sense, uh, in particular, um, Mr. Di Natale points out that the uh, current topography also seems to have limitations for safety issues and that the use of any large machinery such as chainsaw chippers at the site for noise levels, which would not be compatible with other uses and would also have a significant adverse impact on those in the vicinity, namely office, retail, and general uh, public use. Thank you for consideration. Respectfully submitted, Dr. Dean Natale. I would offer for the record that uh, Mr. Dean Natale has outlined several issues that would um, be uh, an objection to the um, to the uh, applicant's um, uh, request for a variance. Okay. So I just have a question on that aspect now. So what's the difference between our property and the one I was looking at because Art was trying to get me to go in there and rent. He has 10 businesses in there renting from the back as well as a wood processing business going on in the back and a cement uh, sand and gravel mixing company going on also. So what's the difference with what he's running versus what I was trying to do as an owner operator? I just, you know, I understand that, you know, I'm going to back off but I was just looking at the differences for what he was operating just to get a better sense of that area. Because if you go down the property, he has about 10 different rental spaces with different stuff. Well, that's, uh, that is good information to have. Um, they, at least during our tenure, have never come in front of us for a permit for what they're doing. Um, at least not to my recollection. So that may be something that our building inspector would like to take a look at in his uh, opious free time. Okay. But no, it, and to your, your point, there, there really shouldn't be, there, sh there isn't a difference um, other than that's a, that's a large property, it does have some back space. We haven't been involved in the permitting of that. Um, but if they were coming in front of us today, they would get the same, would hear the same questions, would be also concerned about impact on, on, on being right on Main Street, is there noise impact, what is the impact on, on the abutters, and no, that's, I, the I use of the space. So um, a fair point, and one thing, I, uh, one more thing I would just, Brooklyn. you had mentioned earlier about your, this um, 86 being grandfathered. To my understanding, there's nothing operating there now, so there's no use that would be grandfathered. I, I, no, I understand that. That's what the, the seller was trying to tell me. I, I just wanted you to be aware that that's not... No, I, 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 I agree with that. You know, I was just confused because um, there's another tree company, a perfect cut, operating out of ours, so... Okay. 
but that's okay. I'll let you guys close the meeting. I know it's Jerry's birthday, and I'm sorry. I was just trying to get knowledge for myself on uh, how to proceed in the future. So, but I, I would love to see you back in front of us, uh, you know, either a different property or a different plan for this one. Um, so. Do you have any recommendations of areas or can we come to you another time we'll and ask just, you that? Well, it's late. They yeah. want to go. We'll look around. Yeah, I, I don't know what's on the market yeah, right now, but yeah. that's fine. But you take a take a look. Um, did we have anyone else from the from the public? It looks like before we close this. I gotta see if I'm gonna am I gonna get a statement from you guys or something, or what would I have formal to show my um, the seller? So if if we vote on this and deny it, yeah. which I think is what you need to, Get to my your, your, your purchase and sale, if that's your choice. Um, and just so you know, once we deny this, you can't come back asking for the same thing and the same mm -hmm. property for a two-year period. So okay. So you, okay. but it sounds like because we, I would typically give you the option of withdrawing or us voting, voting it, and it, it seems from the board, your poll of the board that mm -hmm. it will be denied. We need anyway. deny. But I think the denial is actually better for you than it is. Call. It All is. Right. All right. Uh, that being said, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Thank you. And then I'd like to make a motion to deny the request for a special permit. Bob Rain, um, uh, vote denial. Right. And Vincent Margucci, denial. And Jennifer Platt as denial as well. All right. So we hope you find the, the right location and we get to see you again um, with a, a different result. And, but thank you for for going through the process with us. We appreciate that and wish you the, the best on the next space. Oh, good. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I know. All right. Um, while we have, I see we have Maria here. I would like to um, take an opportunity to um, do the public hearing for 167 North Street. And Vincent, you will need to recuse yourself from that. Oh. Let me. And if you don't mind, I'm going to just ask you to, um, I'm going to open the public hearing, but ask you to just mute yourself through this one. Um, the virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, October 14th, 2021, 7 p.m. on the petition of Vincent J. Raguchi, the third 167 North Street, North Reading, MA, map 27, parcel 47 for a home occupation special permit for a consulting business per article 200-42 North Reading zoning bylaws. And after I just told you um, to mute yourself, you are going to have to tell us what you plan to do at this location, if you would be so kind, Mr. Raguchi. Sure. So it's pretty simple. I, I do consulting work from uh, the house for um, global engineering and construction companies. Um, I don't meet with anyone. Uh, all the work is done by computer or telephone. So merely for the purposes of um, operating an office from the home, which isn't currently permitted, um, I'm making that request. You're muted. That's one way to keep me quiet. <laughs> Hi. Mr. Raguchi, are you familiar with the requirements for a home occupancy permit? Oh, I sure am. <laughs> you might have seen one or two of these. Um, and just confirming this consulting business, so no outside storage of wares or goods, no more than 300 square feet of the residence to be used, no person other than yourself employed in your in the from the home in your consulting business. Correct. Right. Maria, any questions for Mr. Rigucci? I don't think so. 
<laughs> so uh, real quickly, uh, any um, any uh, uh, client use of the pro of your um, home for um, business purposes, or is it all um, remote from you? Everything is remote. Conference calls, um, video. That's it. Uh, telephone and uh, just doing work from my home office. Um, I assume there's, is there anyone here for this public hearing? Any butters? Um, we did have two letters of support in the file uh, to, do, 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 where are these? I have them in front of me, Mrs. Madam Chairman, if I might. Yes, um, please, Mr. Breen. Letter from um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Demetrius and Margarita Maris of 169 North Street, North Reading, regarding the Raguchi permit for consulting business home, dear Ms. Morgan. Um, we, the residents of 169 North Street, support our neighbor, Mr. Vincent Raguchi, in his decision to conduct business from his house, kind regards, respectfully, Dimitri and Margarita Neris. Uh, in an email um, sent uh, to the attention of the zoning board, hello, hi, I live on 168 North Street and I received a letter from Vincent Ragusi on 167 North Street. Would like to have an office in his home. We completely support it and have no problem with it. Thank you, Paula, Paul, excuse me, Paul and Anika uh, Payonessa. And uh, finally, um, with regard to um, uh, Mr. Gucci's application, uh, uh, planning typically responds that all criteria for home occupation special permits as stated in the design law. So any bylaws be adhered to, um, effectively a tacit acknowledgement, so long as he's meeting the criteria, it would appear that planning doesn't object to the application Thank for you. permit. Mr. Breen. That being said, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second, Bob Breen. Maria, would you? Maria Lockhart. Thank you. Um, and then all in favor, or actually I guess we just need to make a motion to approve the special permit. Uh, second. Oh, I mean, I'm um, sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> it was, sorry. Um, it was, it was I, I, making a motion to approve a special permit for on the petition of Vincent J. Raguchi. Barbara and I. 67 North Street. Um, Royal Lockhart, I. Jennifer Platt, I. Thank you, Mr. Raguchi. That will be signed by the board and sent to the clerk, town clerk, for approval. All right. We have one more item on our agenda for this evening. Vincent, you may rejoin us for this. This is a continuation of the special permit for construction landscaping business at 340 Main Street. And do we have a hearing notice to more formally read? I missed the hearing notice for that on the continuance. Did I go right by it? Let me see. One back. And that's it. But we will reopen the public hearing for 340 Main Street. Um, do we have the applicant or his attorney here? We had spoken um, yes. a month ago. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, this is, my name is Michael Pinta. Um, I've been retained. I represent um, not the landscaping company, um, but I represent uh, Jose Gonzaga Sa as well as his entity JSA LLC. Wonderful. Good to have you here this evening. Thank um, you. As you. As you know, we met a month ago to talk about this property. There was a request for a special permit. Um, there are and have been a number of issues with this particular property in terms of uh, vehicles being stored on it, uh, multiple users without permits. 
And we asked Mr. Saw to both address some of the existing non-compliance issues and um, come back to us with his plan for this property. So perhaps if you can give us an update on where things are today. Sure. Um, so I was not uh, involved a month ago. Um, so I'm sort of coming to this somewhat late. So excuse me for not knowing some of the background, but essentially probably the biggest changes since he was last before you is that I've basically been retained to evict the tenant. Um, the tenant is just from this violation that's been issued by the town, that's a violation of the lease, as well as the tenant is behind on rent. Um, so they've already been, since I've been involved, been served with a notice to quit. Um, and the expiration of the vacating period is basically on Monday. Uh, and so what I plan on doing is sometime next week um, after the 14 day period is over, I'll be filing a summary process complaint uh, in Woburn District Court to evict this tenant. Um, so my client's not looking at this point to, for a variance or for a special permit. Um, we're gonna be taking the possession back of the property and the landscaper will no longer be using the property. And as far as when I think that will happen, I mean, you know, this is a commercial eviction, so I'm not subject to some of the problems with residential evictions, obviously. Um, but nonetheless, the, the court system is uh, sort of running less than um, speedy these days. Um, but I still think um, unless there's some kind of fight or objections I get, which I don't know what they would be, I'm confident I'll be in court on this. Um, some by sometime in early November is what I'm hoping. That's great. That's good news. I'm sorry you have to go through the process, but um, we very much appreciate that you're involved in helping Mr. Saw take, uh, take some proactive steps with this property. And we'd uh, love to see you back here when you're ready to, to talk to us. Um, there was a, a request for a special permit uh, had been filed. I don't think we're, you know, anywhere, as you said, ready to, to hear that. Uh, we could continue the existing public hearing for a, you know, maybe two months to give you time to work on the eviction process and then reconvene if that makes sense to you. Yes, I, I think it does. And a couple of months would probably be Hopefully I don't need that much time, but one never knows. Just curious, how many parties are involved in the, um, the notice, the eviction? I know there's the, the one that's the primary, but with the multiple business interests, do you, you anticipate problems with multiple business interests within that address? The, the U-Hauls there, the landscaper, the, I forget who else is on that. Well, there's, there's two different tenants. One is the one I think we've been talking about is the uh, J&R Fine Landscaping, um, which is a Mr. Goddard, I believe is the head of that. Um, and then there's another tenant that's also being evicted, um, which is, excuse me, which is a Payne Auto and Truck Center. Um, for the same reasons, by the way, and he's well behind on his rent. He owes my client a lot of money. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, Mr. Breen. No, I'm just uh, curious if... Um, um, and are, are those the, the sole two tenants at the property at this point? Um, I'm going to defer to uh, my, my client, one of my clients who's uh, Enio is on there. Can you just answer that? Are there any other tenants at that property? We can't hear you. I don't know if you're on mute. You're still on mute. That's I, to be honest with you, I don't think I just was curious. That's all because we had spent so much time in the last. Um, can, you, can you guys hear me now? Yes, yes we can hear you now. So are there other that. tenants other than uh, these two? No, they are all being removed as of right now. They are the only two left okay. in the property. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Yeah, we are working on it. 
Wonderful. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, anything else at this time, or should we just ex extend this for? Well, yeah, the other thing I would just say is that, you know, I haven't even talked to my client about it, but when these tenants are evicted, I, I mean, I'm not sure of their need of pursuing this the special permit. I think it'll depend on who the next potential tenant is and mm -hmm. what they want to do with the property. And I'll, between now and the next time we talk, I'll have some discussions with them and try to find out what the intentions are. Um, but I think continuing this for two months is probably the most appropriate thing to do at the moment. That sounds good to me. Yeah, no, and, and obviously once you know what the proposed use is, there are a number of uses that are allowed as of right that you may not need a special permit for. If it does require a special permit, then we'll want to know who the tenant is, what how they will be using the property, um, some lease plans on how the property would be laid out and used, that sort of thing. But we can we get we can get there when you're ready. At yep. this point, um, if you would like to request an extension until so that would be the December hearing. I don't think we have a date yet, but it's typically the second Thursday in month. November, December, one, two. Which is? That would be the ninth. Okay. If that, do we have a, how does that work with my board? Uh, I'll update again. Uh, December 9th for uh, for our uh, for the December meeting date, Vincent. Yep. I'm available. That's no that problem. Works. And Maria, is that okay with you? Yeah, I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. I know it's a long ways away. December, it's almost yes. holiday yes. times, and that's wonderful. If um, again, if you would just re make that request, we will approve it. Yes, and I <laughs> I, I'd uh, respectfully request that this hearing be continued uh, until December 9th, 2021. I assume at 7 p.m. Yes, at 7 p.m. All in favor? Bob Green, aye. Ben Ragucci, aye. Maria? Maria Lockhart, aye. Lovely. Thank you. Our, could thank could you I ask you one, one last question? Sorry, is... um. It, would you like me to, I don't know, send a letter or an email to somebody so that you have a record of who I am uh, and I can get notice of future, if there's notice to give? Please, if you would send that to Kathy. Um, Kathy, okay. Kathy Morgan, right? Kathy Morgan. And okay. then she can keep you posted, but okay. otherwise um, we'll just have the, expect to see folks in December. So thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you giving us the updates and uh, best of luck with your recalcitrant tenants. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. all Have a them. good night. <laughs> okay. Right. Have a good night. Good night. night. Good night. Jerry, we have kept you too long on your birthday. Um, That's quite all right, right? Hopefully I have many other birthdays. <laughs> Hopefully you'll have many others to spend with us on Zoom. Happy birthday, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. Happy birthday, Jerry. Um, I, uh, one other thing we, Kathy and I talked about earlier was just the December meet, I'm sorry, November meeting. Um, Kathy is away the 3rd and 10th. 3rd and, 3rd and what? When are you away, Kathy? The 3rd to the 11th. 11th. Okay, so we were looking at the 18th, the 3rd Thursday in November for our next hearing. Uh, I'm available. Thank you, Bob. Sorry, I'm available as well. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Me too. All right. Day That's after good. my birthday. Oh. Well, Kathy, please put that in, the, in, the, in our <laughs> records so we can remember. <laughs> Appropriately wish him, wish Vincent a happy birthday at our next meeting. Your birthday meetings. And I think that's it. Thank you all very much uh, for being here tonight. I appreciate the, appreciate everyone's input. Got a good group here. Okay. 
Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night.